us. The fan studios are powered by the Toy Barn. Don't just drive, arrive. Your flagship station for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Sports Radio 97.1 The Fan. Common Man and Company, Mike and T-Bone. Big Monday program, lots to do, 5 o'clock hour, common sense with the common man. NHL draft was yesterday in New Jersey. We bring in our guy, GM, for your Columbus Blue Jackets, Yarmo Kekalainen. And Yarmo, good to talk to you, my friend. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, guys. So, so talk to us about, first of all, the it was made final today, new two-year agreement with goalie Bob and and I'm sure you and everybody else can take a big, giant exhale, getting the Vesna Trophy to sign on the dotted line. You know he's going to be back for the next two years. Give us your thoughts on the deal. Obviously, we're very excited about that. He's a great goaltender. He sets a great example for our team with his work ethic, preparation for every day's work there, whether it's practice or games. And and uh, his run was exceptional last year. and That's why he won the Vesna Trophy. So. We're just very, very excited to have him back for two years, and that's a big part of our team moving forward. How important was it for you guys to get a deal that was in that two- to three-year window, have that restricted free agency still at the end of the deal? you got to protect your assets, so a three-year deal was out of the question there, obviously. So we were talking about a couple of different options with the longer term or two-year term, and, and uh, finally agreed on the two-year, and uh, it was a nice window for both sides to see where this is heading, and and uh, start negotiating a new deal uh, before this is done. I know you guys were, were working the phones and, and obviously you had to have some sort of contingency plan. Now that it's all said and done and everybody's happy, on, when, it, when you guys were still discussing contract, on a scale of 1 to 10, you know, 10 being I'm scared out of my mind, 1 being I'm not scared at all, where did it fall for you? Did you ever think that this wasn't going to get done and you'd have to move on to plan B? I was optimistic the whole time that we can get this done. I felt that Sergei wants to play for the Columbus Blue Jackets, and, and we obviously wanted him back. There was no no question about that, but uh, we have to do what's best for our team, for our franchise. So, so of course, you have to uh, at least somewhere in the back of your mind think, that what, what if he doesn't want to stay? What if we don't get him signed? And then you make some plans and... and, uh, and uh, do the things you have to do to be prepared for that. So um, that's that's basically all I could say. That we're just excited to have him, and but uh, we we were prepared if he was going to go into some other direction. Yarmo Kek, Line and Jackets GM, joining us here on the fan. We heard as well that there were you know throughout the draft process you were looking at possibly moving up in the draft or moving back in the draft. Ultimately, none of those trades materialized. Talk about the players that you did get in this draft using all three picks in the first round. A lot of different options when you go into the draft day, and we were a popular team with three first round picks. There's no question about it. So there was different options. People and teams kicking tires with with our picks and and making suggestions, proposals, and and uh, at the end of the day, when when we approached our picks, we liked the players that we were we were looking at, hoping to have, hoping to get, and uh, and uh, there wasn't a deal on the table that would have made more sense than than picking. So we ended up picking. Taking three good young prospects. Talk to us about your number one guy, Alexander Wenberg. What was the thing that really drew you to him, and what's the timetable for a guy like that? Is he a year away, in your opinion, two years away? I think that the play of the young prospects always shows how much away they are. You never want to rush them into anything. If, if it's, uh, this is a young kid that's just starting his pro career. He played on the second level last year in, the, in Sweden, which is the all Svenskan League. And next year he's moving on to play in the elite series, which is the uh, the highest level in Sweden. And and we'll see him in development camp. And he's, he's still still a young boy. He's not hasn't matured into a man's body yet. And there are a lot of other things you have to mature in before you're going to be an NHL hockey player. So um, he's a smart hockey player. He's a good skater. He's competitive too. And you know the, uh, the our scouts will be uh, able to give you a more thor- thorough scouting report. I've seen him play before World Junior Championships in the World Junior. So. I know him. I, I can say that I know him fairly well, but our scouts are the ones that do the work, and those are the guys that make the final selections when we uh, when we get to uh, our list there and put, put everything together. Free agency starts up this Friday. What kind of concerns do you think the Jackets might be able to address in this free agency period? 
we talked about adding some scoring, adding some offense into our lineup through maybe through a trade at the uh, at the draft. It didn't happen. Um, now we're we're setting our sights into the uh, free agency, and there's still a possibility of a trade before we get there. So all those are our, our options. We're gonna see what the, uh, the the best and second best and third options are, and put them in order and try to attack the number one first. And if that goes away, then we go to the second one. So. We'll be prepared once the time, once the uh, free o- free agency opens up, and we'll have continued discussions with other teams about other possibilities which could uh, um, present to us through a trade. Yarmo Kekalainen, Jackets GM, joining us here on the fan. Last thing for you on on a personal note, this was, you know, your first draft as as, as Jackets GM, the first European born general manager in hockey. Did that creep into your mind yesterday while you were sitting there, or were you just focused on the task at hand? Not at all. I, I uh, that this was the area where I was most familiar with. This is uh, something that I'd been doing for eleven different drafts for the NHL teams, running the draft and and just uh, just being there on the uh, on the draft floor. That was always my my show and my day with our scouting with the scouting staff that I was running with Ottawa and St. Louis. So I was very comfortable yesterday. Yarm, I always appreciate it, my friend. We'll talk again soon. Thank you very much.